second archetype, the two quotes. Every post is honorable in which a man can serve his country. When you read this, what, what came to mind? What first came to mind, this guy? I was a little confused by it at first. I didn't really understand it. Okay. What part did you understand? Post. Post? Post? And then what, how did I have the post? What is a post? A job. A job? So you took this out and said instead, job. And if I read it as every job is honorable in which a man can serve his country, does it make the flow a little bit better than that? Yeah. So then, what do you think he's saying now in this? In this? Caroline, what is he saying now in this book? In this uh, I said that he's saying every job is important and it helps the country. That's correct. I think he's saying that only men can help this country. Yeah, he is. Um, at the time, women were allowed to serve. Women couldn't uh, join the army, women, could, women, women didn't have any fair any rights. So at the time it was just men alone allowed to serve. I felt like Jamie Adams was pretty involved and there's a whole Betsy Ross thing, like all those flags. It, it, she made flag. But when he was generally speaking, he was really only talking about men, which is obviously you have to look at history to their context. Um, why do you think I picked this quote as being important? Kind of. Well, I said that he made everyone feel special. Everyone feel like they mattered. Well, except women, I guess. Yeah. And I could, honestly, in that time period, uh, I imagine women enjoyed hearing, not enjoyed, but he was talking, I don't know how to explain it. He, he was talking to America a lot when he was talking to this but when he was talking to this country, yes, it was different. But he made people feel appreciated. Okay, second quote. Part of the conflict, the greater the triumph. Susan. When you read this quote, what came to mind? The harder fights are better. That's true. So why do you think he's, what do you, why do you think he's, he's Well, I don't think it's true. You don't think it's true? Why do you think it's true? Well, because he's like saying like, well, in the Revolutionary War, like if everybody died, but we still won, that would be cool. And that's be not better. Cool. That'd be better. Yeah. That's not do you cool. think people at the time would have thought that they died for something then? Uh, I don't know that the women would have thought that because they can't do shit, Mr. C. They couldn't do anything, maybe? Right. Um, but I think he's going to point out that he... Or, Caroline, what did you think of this book? I kind of agree. He was just saying, like, the harder the issue, the greater it feels to win. Yeah. And I don't know if I necessarily agree always. Scott, do you agree with the book? Um, I mean, I guess when you do something that's hard and you do it, it feels it feels like like it feels better because you because you didn't think you could do it and you did it. Do you think there was a sense of like national pride after the the Revolutionary War? The Americans or the colonial people think they've been taken advantage of, they've been oppressed by the British government. The British government is the, one of the biggest governments in the world that are ruling them. And they were able, it was an incredibly difficult conflict, but they got to triumph after they beat them. Do you understand though why he would say something like that, especially to rally up his people, the people? So he doing it before the conflict, in the middle of the conflict, or after the conflict? This was after the conflict. I could see him doing it in the middle of the conflict. Why? Because you use, use the word rally. Rally up. Mm -hmm. Yep. Why do you think he made, why do you think it's probably better than doing the middle conflict? So when he wins, it looks better. Like this is hard. He's, he's, he's in he's charge. Good. He wants to look good. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, That's a great point. If people are dying, then if if people don't want to keep fighting, then he can say that so that people will keep trying to fight. Yeah. And even towards the people who are dying. Do you think he's trying to make it feel like if they do die, their death, death is a triumph? 
over something bigger, something you you died fighting the biggest biggest country in the world. Oh. So he's sort of like uh, this wasn't little. This was huge. This was a big fight, and we won. We we did this triumph because we won. We defeated the biggest government in the world with our little tiny government. So how do you think that makes people feel? I uh, give a lot of those deaths. Yeah, that's true. They could, because it's a first answer. What about you, Charlie? What do you think? How does it make people feel? Pride. Pride. I think Skylar said something smart. I know, it's rare. <laughs> I don't think that was necessary. I think Skylar is very smart. Skylar, what was the smart thing you said? Oh, was it this, the bribe, or something you said in the room? I don't know. <laughs> what was it that he said was smart? Well, he said, like, if you do something that you didn't think you could do it, it makes you feel better. So that's like that pride part that you were yeah. talking about. Makes you feel good. He made people feel good. We, he just told them, just to be the, the largest army in the world. And you, you did it, but almost nothing. So did they not think that they could win when they started this? I think their army was bigger. The, the bar- British army was the largest army in the world at the time. How did they do it? How did they do it? They, had, they were fighting on their own turf. They were fighting with their own area and their own, their own. They knew the land, they knew it better than the British. That's part of the reason. And they just had more will to fight than the British did. But they're, they. They used that concept of making something bigger. And that's what inspired the people. George Washington inspired the people. He was the guy that led that triumph too. So like that thing like make America great again, were they like talking about Washington's time? Mm-hmm. I think that's a que- that's a good question. But I think it's a question for a different view. Uh, uh, like when, Mr. C? You have to ask somebody who worked for the pres- President Trump to elaborate on that. You a chomper. Um, that's, that's something we can talk about right now. He's a chomper. I know he is. I was only 17 and 7 16, so I couldn't vote. Um, Washington, so this is the third artifact. This is a news headline right after. Caroline, are you paying attention? Yeah. Yes. I'm just trying to calculate how old you are. <laughs> Sometimes teachers are young. Um, so this is a news headline. That How old was George Washington whenever he was? You know, I honestly do not know. This was, he was probably in his early 40s at the time. He was in his early, mid 40s, probably. probably maybe even later, somewhere around there. But um, he was relatively young. He had gray hair, though. Or he also wore a wig, too. Um, so this would be a head, like, type of headline a newspaper would read. Um, do you need any help? Or? No, I'm good. Okay. I just forgot something. Oh, okay. Um, this would be a headline that something would probably read after the war is over. Washington leads army defeat the most powerful country on earth. New country declares independence, independence from Great Britain to form a more union. Now, Skyler, you just picked up the morning newspaper. This is the headline you read. How would it make you feel? Like George Washington was the most important person in the world? That is correct. Or, correct, that's a, that's a great answer. Was it he defeated the most powerful country? Charge of the Continental Army. Yeah, then it's 
Okay. Yeah, so it's like, let's say, uh, here's an analogy. A football coach leads a team to win a Super Bowl. They say that coach led the team. This is Washington's team. Washington led the Army. 